Hello and welcome to the Build With Air Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build model kits and hang out with you. We're going to wait uh, for a few minutes, see if a few more folks want to join us before we get into the building portion. This is the pre-show segment, as it were. Um, thanks for everybody that's watching. Uh, those of you who are hanging out here, if you're a subscriber, throw the Bear Cave emote in there in the chat. Let the people know what's up. Uh, yeah, throwing out some emotes there. Oh, got to throw the uh, Lego emote in there. Ultron's here. Hi, Ultron. Happy to have you here. Uh, hanging out, doing my thing. Uh, gonna finish up this finisse. Uh, and then start the Maganac. Maganac. It's a great. Just saying it. It's just fun to say, we're gonna build a Maganac. The 144 scale Maganac. Uh, Ultron's cooking a pork chop. Uh, Astrology says, I should get some food. You should. And then Ultra says, Maganac. Look, am I saying it kind of like a robot? Yes. Was that intentional? No. Am I sticking with it? Maganac. That means yes. Um, it's a really simple build. I mean, it's a 144 scale. Uh, it was released in. This was a... Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. This is a 2019 kit. This might be the most modern kit we built this year. Because we built a few 2018s. I don't know if we built anything for 2019 in 2019. Don't quote me. I'm bad with that. But it's uh, it should be a fairly simple design. Easy build. A few stickers. They're not great. I think they're mostly in the shields. It'll be fine. Lashbrook is here. Hi, Lashbrook. Um, one of the things that's cool about the Finisse is that it comes with a base. So we will, we will be all about that base. Uh, and put a base on it, which is good because right now I have it standing up and it is barely standing up. It's barely making it work. Um, you can't even, I mean, obviously it's bad because it's so much of it is green. Uh, that's bad. We'll also take a look at the big gun it has, which is made up of smaller guns. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of the... Big weapon made up of smaller weapons that combine into a big weapon. Real big fan of that. And then the shield, which is the cockpit, and we will transform it. The transformation's fine. I, I can't follow the instructions super well about how to do it, so I think I'm messing it up a little bit. But we'll uh, we'll take a look at it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I was like screwing up how it's supposed to look because there's some ways to twist it that I don't seem to understand. But yeah, it'll be good. Alteran says, who needs instructions? I mean, I do. I pretty much, very much do. Uh, but yeah, we'll wait for a few more folks. See if anybody else wants to join us. Um, it's uh, not too hot. It cooled down here in New York a bit, which is nice. I have the window open, but I don't have a window fan going, which is good. Keeps down the sound, the noise. I do have a fan pointing at me for air circulation. And all that, because I got these lights. But they're not too hot, so that's good. Um, Finise, one of the big things you have to do is obviously transform it into a jet. But we also add, have to add these cool, clear, pink, like, accents to the wing, to the, like, I don't know what, I don't know what these are supposed to be. But we got to put them on, and so we will. They look cool, and then we'll build a base. And then we'll transform it, yeah. And it'll look pretty dang cool. Oh, let's pull G10 out while I'm doing, thinking of this. Um, but yeah, I hope you all are, are having a good time. Um, it's on my YouTube, the archive. I did uh, some uh, Jackbox games last night. I originally planned on going longer than an hour and a half, but uh, I wasn't feeling particularly great. And then also, the stream took a turn for the... Not the worst, but the weird, I would say. It got a little weird. Uh, chat got a, a... The games got a little weird. And I was like, all right, we're done there. It was fine. I also had to get up early. Because uh, I had to go to the... Um, uh, I had to go to the Social Security offices today. Let's go to the overhead. We got a few people here. It'll be good to... We'll do some building. Let's go to the overhead look. There we are. Overhead look. Great. We're doing it. Um, yeah, I had to go uh, to the Social Security office today. 
and I waited a real long time. And then they were like, look, you're not, we're not going to be able to see you today. Well, we can make an appointment for you tomorrow if you want to make an appointment. We can't do that over the phone. We can only do it in person. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. So I have an appointment tomorrow. And hopefully I'll be able to get this thing straightened out. But here's the Phoenicia Rizincata. I don't, I'm not, I don't say that right. Um, it's a good kit. It definitely needs to stand. So I'm excited to build the base for it, for it to stand up. Um, uh, I think that there's a lot to like about this kit. Um, I think it looks really nice. I really love the colors. I think the shield is fun. Uh, here's the big weapon, which we're, I'm going to take out, out and show off. So here's the big weapon. As you can see, a big old gun. But what's up with this gun? Well, it's a gun. It's a machine gun. And then it's a weird way to hold a blade. It's a weird beam she like that it, this is weird this is a weird thing but you can take that and you can also combine the two of these together to make this kind of thing which is fun and then you can combine them count dooku's sword yeah and then you can combine these and then you get yourself a big old weapon and you can put them inside there and there you go you got a big old weapon it's fun and then i guess these split apart and you can put both of these underneath like the cockpit uh which we'll get to when we transform it but first things first we can't transform it until we well we can we can take that take this part off here i'll take this off put the hand back on um we will uh get to the transformation here after we build the uh uh what do you call it um I don't know what to call these. What the fuck are these things? They're like, they're not weapons. They're like exhaust, cool, cool exhaust. I don't know. Beam curtains, curtains. These are curtains. We got to. Okay, there we go. It took me a second. We've got to build the curtains for our finisse. So we got to put these together here. We got the curtains together. We start with. K3. Nice and easy. We'll put that there so you can see that. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? It looks like we've got a, a bit of a small crew this evening. I'm hoping some more people show up. Uh, Thursdays are usually pretty good for, for me. Um, I am not streaming this Saturday. I'll say that. Um, I mentioned it yesterday. I'll repeat that a couple times probably throughout the stream, depending on uh, numbers and if the new people are coming through. Uh, I won't be streaming this Saturday, but I will be streaming this Sunday. I'll do a special Sunday stream. Uh, Solf is melting. I'm sorry, Solf. I'm sorry that you're melting. I wish it was not melting temperatures for you. Um, like as I said, it is fairly reasonable here. Uh, although I, uh, I'm good. Got my cats some behavior collars to keep them from fussing at each other. All right. Well, hope that works. Hope that they start fussing and fighting and start chilling and maxing and relaxing instead. Um, okay, okay, okay. These are clear, and so sometimes it's a little hard to see exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Because these are clear pieces, but we'll figure it out. Uh, yes, we are aiming to complete this. We will definitely complete this tonight. We uh, we really have very few steps left. We have to um, uh, build these curtains. And then when we transform it, there is an add-on we can put on so that the weapons uh, sit underneath the cockpit. So we got to get that those pieces there. And then we'll be done. Uh, there are pheromones. Okay. I'm doing the opposite. It's only been 90 today and yesterday. Okay. Only 90 is a fucking thing. That's a mood right there, Last Brook. Um, yeah, but we'll definitely finish this up. And then we'll move on to the Maganac. 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 Which will be a, a fun build. But yeah, let's get these curtains out and completed. That there. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, so I, I spent some time at the Social Security office today in New York, and that was not fun. Um, 
I'm glad I was able to make an appointment for tomorrow because the person that I ended up speaking to who was like, who I, I was like, look, I, I need to get this done as soon as possible. I have all day. Uh, I can hang out till close. And they were like, it's just not going to happen. We're short staffed today. We'll have pe people tomorrow come tomorrow. And then it was like, explain what your problem is. And I said, and they went, okay, so that'll either be really easy or you'll need, you'll need to set, oh, we'll help you send letters to Washington. And I was like, oh, fuck. What do you mean? <laughs> They're like, yeah. It's like, yeah, either this is a run of the mill thing and you will have all the information we need in order to make these changes or you'll have to go and speak to someone with a lot more authority to be able to make these changes because not everyone can make the changes that you need, which is fair and makes sense. If you didn't watch last night, you don't know. Um, somewhere in some government database, it says that my date of birth was June 23rd, 1960. And I was born on June 23rd, 1980. Now, that, most of the time, gets fixed by humans. Humans look at that and go, that's wrong. Okay. Um, it means that certain databases I can't uh, access, I don't have access to, uh, which includes, uh, you saw the moon landing? Yeah. Um, it means that I can't, like, do my state taxes online. I can do my federal online, but not my state. And when I try to do my state, it bounces back and I have to do it manually. And it's fine when I do it manually. It's not great. It's none of it's good. It's not no, none of it's good, and it's all weird. Um, all right, so we did one of these, and so we'll do another curtain here. It's very, very simple, easy to do, easy to put together here. Um, so what I need is for someone to go into some sort of database and go, this is the date. We have his birth certificate here. We have information uh, proven on his uh, passport and social security, social security offices. And they're like, blah, blah, blah. This is who he says he is. Okay, everything's going to be cool. And then I need that to be in writing. And I need them to fill that out in a document and be like, we said this and we mean it. And then I can have that sent. Then I can have that sent to the social security office because this is all so that I can apply for social, uh, so I can apply for unemployment. Uh, the worst kind of isekai travel to another world to stand in line for social security for six episodes. Yeah, that's a bad isekai. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's like, yeah, that's a real lame isekai. I would rather, I'd rather uh, be in several of the ones I'm watching rather than that. Although I think I'm probably going to stop watching one of these guys. Uh, bureaucracy cheat magician Pat. Indeed. I definitely need to cheat magician my way out of that. We'll talk about that later. I've actually been thinking about this. So I might be broadening the scope of closer look because closer look is like, follow-up videos about kind of whatever I want to make a follow-up video about, right? Like, that's the general concept of uh, of that of the show, is if there's something I'm interested in or I'm doing something with a kit or whatever. Uh, I've been thinking I might do a closer look where I just, like, talk about, like, outside of the stream, talk about some anime stuff. And just be like, closer look, the isekais of of the summer season. And look at the four isekai that I'm watching. And kind of compare and contrast them. And then maybe also like take a moment to talk about like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm thinking about that. I think that like might be an interesting thing to do. Since there are four shows that are out. And they're different. They are different. Even if a couple of them feel very by the book. They are different in, in, in their own ways. And it's kind of interesting. So I don't know. I've been thinking about that. Might do That might be one of my videos. As a compare and contrast of those. Alright. So. I think I figured this out. 
These look pretty good. Uh, hello, Spade. Welcome. We are just about to finish our finisse. Uh, we're applying the uh, beam curtain things that live in this thing. I'm going to put those on there. Pretty cool. Oh, that didn't lock into place, but that's all right. We'll figure that out. Uh, kind of go in like that. Yeah, and then kind of go around. And then the wings go back here. Uh, we do need to build the base for this because it does not love standing up on its own, which is fine because they included a base. So generally when they know, oh, we made a thing that it does not stand up, they, they will put a base in, which is, which is helpful for kits like this. That look cool. The curtains are shields. Yeah, I'm, I'm no expert about Gundam Bill Fighters. And we don't have this for Bob here, who is the person who, who seeming, as far as I can tell, knows the most about this show uh, and, and the follow-ups. So I can't claim to be an expert in it. Uh, I'm just letting you know that, yeah, I think these are like shields. I'm going to look, yeah. Yeah, this looks like shields from the images of it. Uh, we'll put this like here. Let's see take a look at that so I don't know um, but right now let's build the base for it because we are all about that base and then yeah then we'll do some assembly uh, we'll transform it into its jet mode and then we'll add uh, in the uh, the necessary components for that uh, I believe the, yeah the weapons we have to add something to that for, but um this would be pretty easy to assemble. I don't uh, deal with bases too often. I don't buy them uh, just like outside of the ones that are given uh, in kits because I don't display a lot of these. Um, you just finished painting. Uh, Spade says, just finished painting my first layer. I wondered uh, Gundam Bale. And yeah, those beam mantles do act as shields. Thank you for letting me know. Appreciate that. Good to know. Uh, cool. I, I, I have been thinking about maybe doing, um, some, uh, water transfers on this. Uh, there are some good big pieces of information here that I could transfer, uh, specifically like the, yeah, the, the XXXG stuff that, that you can't really see too well there, but. There's a few things. I've been thinking maybe about doing that, but you know me. Uh, I barely scratch the surface of my abilities when it comes to that. So I try to take it easy when it comes to applying any sort of sticker or decal because I'm just not great at it. I don't know. Okay, so this goes here but yeah I don't I, you know I don't display a lot of my model kits so I haven't felt the need to have bases in order to display them um, so yeah I haven't built a lot of you know the standard I mean the standard basic you know the action base that you can buy are pretty easy to to put together there's nothing particularly difficult about that so anyone could I don't feel I, I've never felt the need to like do a video on that or you know show myself building one on stream. Do do do. All right, we got sixteen. Uh, I'm excited to to build a Maganac. Um, as I've said, look. Are there uh, model kits that exist out there from Gundam Wing that we haven't built? Technically, yes. Are they easily purchasable and available? Uh, no. So the Maganek is the last thing that is commercially uh, obtainable for us to build. So I'm excited to finally do that. Uh, I love water slide decals. It looks much better than sticker decals. No ugly sticker seams. Indeed, yes. They, they certainly look a lot better. And especially if you're putting together a kit that you are very excited about and you can't wait to display it. If you have a kit that you're like, 
I built this. This is going on display. Uh, the uh, water-based decals can really uh, take it up a notch and really like make it a, a showcase piece. Um, I definitely believe that. Uh, I just know that I'm in general not great at it. In the same way, I'm not great at painting. I just don't have the patience for it. Um, but also when we started doing this two years ago, I didn't have the patience to do decals or stickers at all. And I, I've been pleased that I've been able to get some of those into streams, uh, some of the building. Uh, I've been very happy to have the time to do that. All right, so that goes down like that. And we need B1311, it's this one, okay. Um, but yeah, so yes, we don't have uh, a couple of the other um, uh, Gundam Wing kits that came out in 144 high grade years and years ago that are not commercially available right now. We don't have, we've, we've never built those. Those are somewhat of our holy grail, if I can use that expression. Someday, maybe we will build them. But as far as at obtainable by me, the Magnac is the last of the kits. And it's cool because it came out this year. So it's nice to have a new one as the, the last one we built. Between that and the Leo, which we did pretty recently. Uh, da, da, da. I've actually heard. Now we did the one one hundred serpent. When we built the serpent, we built it, and that was the two thousand one or nineteen ninety nine. I can't remember the year, but that was an old ma um, serpent. I've heard the high grade serpent is actually really nice and a, re a really nice build, and comes together really well. Um, but since we built that, I'm in no rush to build something I've already built. You know, I think the only thing that the only wing kit that I would build, even though we've built something else just like it, is if someone wanted to. And of course, this is not, you know, not saying, hey, I need this. But if somebody ended up buying off the Amazon wish list, the um, uh, picked up. Um, the uh, heavy arms master grade um, custom because we built the uh, high grade of that not the master grade because master grade is very expensive because it was a really limited run of the kit uh, that I would love to build because I think the heavy arms is just a great kit and I think that endless waltz version is just pretty cool I think those colors are great uh, if you want another death site, the Jason kit, uh, much like the um, uh, the Love Tyrant that we built, Gundam the End kit is reminiscent of the D Hell. No sight though; it's got Devil Gundam Evil Mouth instead. Uh, I know the End. Yeah, Gundam the End. I mean, it's a it's such a weird name. The End. Uh, yes, I do know. Yeah, it does have it. Uh, it's shielding is very reminiscent of uh, the Death Scythe Hell. Um, it, it's, got a, it's got like a Death Scythe with hands. It's got hands. I will say that. It has hands. And I like that a lot. Uh, I'm going to see if it's on Amazon. Uh, Gundam. The End. Let's see what we've got here. Yes, we've got uh, the 144, the end. Oh, we have the 144 high grade crossbone build fighters. Yeah, that's not that. That's a different one. Yeah. That is uh, pricey for a 144. I do like those hands, though, so I'm putting it on the list. We'll see. Those hands are. Shoulder hands. I'm into that. That's some nonsense. You went big hands. And you wrote evil mouths.
Uh, and then, yes, and then you misspelled something, and then you freaked out about misspelling something, Ultron. I understand. Um, the letter N is right next to the letter B on the keyboard, and we know that you did not mean to write anything not cool, and you instead made a typo. And that is all right, because we know. And you are you are apologizing enough, in my opinion. It's cool. I understand. Ultra. That was not an intentional. I mean, obviously, wouldn't make. I mean, oh no, nope, 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 nope. He's gonna try to say like, well, if you were being racist, it would be. That part would, it's like, no, that wouldn't make any sense. So, I don't know what I was saying there. It did look, oh, Ultron. It didn't look great. It didn't look great, Ultron. You made a typo that looked bad. Certainly. I'm not, I'm not going to say here and say, oh, that's nothing. I'm going to say, you made a bad typo. Uh, chat, you cannot edit chat on your own. You can't be like, you can't take it back. Uh, so, yeah. So, there you go. Now, just next time you type big, uh, you, next time you have to type big into a, uh, into a text document, you will pause for a very long time and be very careful of typing big. I think that's okay. <laughs> to be sure, yeah. Um, I will say this about this kit, this this stand. A lot of articulation in the stand. They're giving me a lot to work with here, which I appreciate. Hmm. I'm yawning. I apologize. I got up early for me today. I can sleep in a little bit tomorrow, and then. On Tuesday, I have an appointment. Uh, it's this very interesting thing. Every part of every part of the unemployment process has been interesting because that's something that I've never dealt with before because I've never filed for unemployment. Like, you know, it's all the stuff that you're expecting and, and kind of know about uh, the process uh, to the point where they were like, hey, we scheduled you an appointment to come in Bring your resume and any documents. And they're going, it's the thing where like, it's all about going through the motions, but I haven't been approved for unemployment yet. So I don't know if I'm like, it's what it's like, well, if I don't get money on Monday, am I going to come in on Tuesday? And then I also kind of know why I'm not, wouldn't be getting money because of the social security thing. Am I going to get that fixed tomorrow? Mail it out tomorrow. It fixed on Monday. I get like, okay, okay. Like, it's fine, and if going on Tuesday is going to get me full-time work, then sure, but it's also like, okay, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> hmm. I applied for a job that I am not qualified for, but it it's a good job. It was a cool job, so I'm not expecting to get it, but I, uh, there is a head of podcast development for a major entertainment brand has a podcast, like in charge of audio, but basically it was like making sure all the podcasts about these brands are like hitting the right people and have the, the social media teams are communicating. And like, I don't think I'm qualified to particularly to do that but I definitely can do it I was like uh, okay we'll see we'll see how it goes I uh I am interested in in, in that work but I was like well we'll we'll see what's up see if anybody wants to hire me to run that it makes a lot more sense than data scientist in New Zealand which I mentioned the other day is a thing that I, I got a second notice about that. I got a secondary notice about working in New Zealand as a data scientist. 
Hey y'all, I am not qualified to be a data scientist by any measure. There is no world in which I am qualified for that position. It does not make any sense. <sighs> Sorry, mm, yawning. Apologize. As I said, up early for me. Alright, so this goes like this. And it goes like that. And you lock that down. So it doesn't... Then you can slide it, which is cool. Got some movement there. Get deeper, narrow there. We'll lock that in place. Then we can go high or low. We'll go through that for now. We'll see where it takes us. Um, but yeah. And then... This thing... This thing turn? Oh, this goes like this. Yeah, this has got a lot, of, a lot of intricate piece things going on here. And then G10 is this. And then made me laugh a lot. The data scientist thing really did make me laugh because I was like, "That's not, that's not a thing that I am right for." All right, and then we go. There's a spot on the bottom of this kit. Where this should fit into. Right in the crotch. It's not working. So we'll do the other way. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to trans... We're going to get this uh, set on the uh, stand here. And then we will transform it. And that'll be fun. Doesn't want to clop in place here. All right, let's try. Let's uh, let's try transforming this thing, and then we'll try putting it on the base as a transformer. So we'll try to do that. Put this down. Put this aside. Put these to the side. Okay. Transformation. First thing we got to do is we got to take off the curtains. Don't need these curtains. Get out of here, curtains. Okay. That's part of the base there. So this, this, okay. So, pop these down. Pop these out. Pop this down. Like that. Um, take the hands off. Hands off. And these can come out. Like this. Okay, like that for now. Basically, it'll be like this here. And then... This can go down. This turns. These go up like this. You can make these out like that. And then the legs are the part that I'm like, I know that these do this because that always happens. The legs are the thing that I'm like, I'm not sure what they want me to do here. So this is going to go bend it. Oops. Yeah, because there's no words in this. I mean, there are no words in, in in English in this section. I should say, there are there is text here. It is just not text that I can understand. So I am going by the images here and what they're highlighting, which I think is like this here. I can't really tell. That's the problem. It's like I'm looking at the instructions and I under, I'm trying to figure out what they want, but I, I can tell that this goes up. So this goes up. Hmm. I 
I think it's like that. Okay, I think I got it. Like that. This goes like this. Like this. All right. Just gonna go like that. And then, um, all right, then we can attach the weapons here. Or we can attach this part. Uh, this, just like the wing Gundam, just clips onto the top here. Uh, which is cool. Oh, arm fell off. That's not cool. When the arm falls off, that's not cool. That's a building 101, folks. You can take that to the bank. If I've never, if I've taught you nothing else, it's not cool when the arm falls off. In model kits and anime. And life in general. Hope you I'm glad that I can be even slightly educational. All right. So that's that. And then, oh yeah, we gotta build the attachments to the wings, which are C's here, which is uh, C13, C11. All right. Ah, I get this. I get it now. Go like that. Like that. Ah, uh, snap flight mode. Indeed, Mr. Bob. Hello, Mr. Bob. Yes, we are in flight mode here. We are doing the finishing touches of uh, adding in. Um, we built the, uh, you missed it, which is fine. Mr. Bob, it's totally okay. Uh, we, we, we built the uh, the beam curtains here, uh, and then we're now going to attach the weapons into flight mode. And then we'll try to put this on a stand. After that. Indeed, flight mode. And then, where do these lock in, though? Oh, they lock into the weapons empty slots here. I got it. Go like this. And then they go like this. Hmm. This one doesn't like to work. Alright, well we're not gonna do that then. Something's weird. There. Alright, so we're gonna find the adapter we need. To put we need the one three. If I'm a little frazzled today, I apologize. I'm feeling a little off uh, on stream tonight. I uh, hope that I'm not screwing anything up. But yeah, I'm feeling a little off, off kilter this fine evening. Uh, all right, so this goes on here. This goes like this. My PC, your PC sound is dead. 
Oh no, Mr. Bob, that sucks. It's uh your your sound card on your on your motherboard? Or your receiver or I hope it's something you can fix. That is uh that is fixable. I hope it's something you can get done. That's bad. You need sound. So much of the internet has cool sound stuff in it. You gotta have sound. So much of the stuff you like on the internet involves that stuff. So I hope you get that fixed, Mr. Bob. Okay, so then we go like this. And we did it. Alright, so now... We've got the flight mode here. Let's let's fiddle with this here. Do that like that. Fiddle with no. Well, guess we won't fiddle with that then. Yeah, that's pretty damn cool. Flight mode engaged. I got you on the phone, says Mr. Bob. Well, Mr. Bob, I hope you. Fix that shit. Get things working. Because that's a bummer. Alright. Flight mode. Engaged. We did it. I am really liking this. Uh, I, you know, I'm always I always like a good transformation. Uh, I think the one bummer of the Gundam Epion Master Grade, which is otherwise a, a wonderful Master Grade, is that I think that it's um, transformation is kind of lazy. Uh, I wish it was better on that. Um... You know, and of course, later the, the Zero doesn't have those transformations, but uh, yeah, I think this looks fucking cool as hell. There is a, that is the Gundam Finise, uh, Rincita, uh, Rincita, and uh, I am pleased to have built this. Uh, and Mr. Bob, I'm sorry that you are having trouble with your PC audio. I hope that gets fixed. But yeah, I have to take some photos of this. I'll have to transform it and take photos of the other mode. Um, I'm going to put this down slowly on the floor. Pat, you're, Pat, you're close to not having to say that name again. Indeed. Um, I You may have noticed that, uh, I don't know, maybe on uh, Monday... I just started calling it the Finise and stopped saying the name of the second part because it is like, you know, the hell or, uh, it is an upgrade. Uh, the Renacita. I just stopped saying it at one point. One of the cool things about this Magnac is they want, they, they, they think it would be great if you bought, obviously, Bandai wants you to buy multiples, but part of the reason they want you to buy multiples, not just because the you know money, is because they give you a bunch of numbers for this kit. So you could put some numbers on it. Uh, um. So yeah, you could. Uh, I'm gonna. I gotta write something here in chat, and I gotta send this whisper. Uh, it's a diorama kit. Yes. Well, yeah, because they're like, what if you have? Because they're, they're setting. They have that set that's coming out. Oh no. I shouldn't. This should not be zooming, y'all. It should not be auto focusing. Please don't auto focus. Zoom is fine. Please don't autofocus. That's bad. Uh, um, but they have this set where you can buy like a bunch of them all at once. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm not doing that, but it is cool. Uh, uh, but yeah, they have a set up so you can like, you know, if you bought a couple of these, I could number them. Uh, which would be fun. But I, I might do that just for... Just for kicks, I might just number it. I forget where the, yeah, you know, just like, 
You can mark it on the shield and on uh, the shoulder. And that might be fun to just kind of be like, yeah, this is number 10. I just have, yeah, I have 10 of these. Why not? Uh, but like I said, uh, well, well, we got to go to the, oh, we, well, we got to change the image. First and foremost, got to go to the Magnac photo. There are things about this kit I very much enjoy. I love that the weapon fits in the shield. That the shield can go on the back or on the side. It, like, oh, I don't need the shield right now. It can live on my back. I love that about this kit. Um, uh, I like an axe as a weapon. I think that's pretty great. Now, do I wish that this axe was not just one piece? Yes. Let me see if I can find it. Um... Obviously, this is a one. This is a one four four high grade. Uh, it's a traditional kit. Yes, uh, it's a little bit different than the Leo. Uh, I mean, it's like a one two three four five. It's five sheets, um, and it's kind of like you know all over the place. It's it's not the same uh, stepwise as the Leo. The Leo was definitely uh, something else. Um, this is meant to be, to buy multiples of. This is, they want folks to buy more than one of these, even more than the Leo. Uh, yeah, I wish this axe was not one piece. I wish the gun wasn't just, uh, three pieces. Two of these, and then, uh, I forget where the, the, uh, oh, it's over here. Yeah. I, I wish the gun was, was, there's a little more detail on there. Oh, NVIDIA Audio does not like being updated over RDP. It, this feels less than a high grade. So, Mr. Bob, it definitely feels like it is a... It feels like I should have spent six more dollars and gotten two of them. That's what it feels like to me. More than anything. Uh, because there's so, the Noble Gundam. There's some nostalgia about that, right? There is some nostalgia for Maganac, but honestly... This is like, if if they want me to buy multiples, then I think they're not doing the best job at convincing me that I want more than one of these. As a completionist, I'm very happy to have it. Um, but I, because I've been told this is a very solid kit. Uh, and obviously, like, one of the fun things about the Magnac is that it has no neck. Uh, seeing some pieces, I could do some magic with, with uh, uh, spray paint. Yes, Mr. Bob. I bet you could make this shield, the, the two, this two-tone shield, look incredible with some paint. I bet uh, markers would do uh, a world of good for this kit, especially the chest piece. Because the, uh, I, I will say this though about this kit, and we're gonna get into actually building the kit. Don't you worry about it. We will build the kit. Um, that uh, the components that are going into that I'm gonna be putting on this to give us this two-tone effect. I'm very pleased with how the chest is going to look. I, I've looked at photos. I've, I mean, I've seen the pieces in front of me. I'm excited to put this chest piece together. Um, I don't love that the shoulders are stickers. The details on the shoulder are stickers. I don't love that. I accept it as that is part and parcel with building a high grade. Is that that is that is it's part of it. I don't love that, but it's part of it. So we can accept that and we can move on. Um, in the same way that when we did the um, the high grade shoulders for the sand rock, uh, um, the high grade of the uh, endless waltz version, it was disappointing. How much detail I was, how much detail was coming through because I was uh, using uh, stickers. I don't love that. Uh, when it comes to like the eye, like the purple stickers that are going to come with this kit, totally okay with that. I understand. Uh, this is a high grade. I'm not getting a gemstone or a fake, obviously fake gemstone. I understand that. I get that. That's okay. But um, yeah, there, there are some parts of this that I wish were, that were, you know, a little more plastic component and a little less sticker. But that's, you know, that's life. Uh, I definitely am not interested in buying like the nine piece kit or or seven piece kit, whatever, or the forty nine piece kit, whatever it is. There's like a, a nonsense amount you could purchase of these, 
and I have no real interest in that. Uh, uh, it is, yeah, I just don't think that's worth it. Hmm, sorry. Again, apologize for the yawns. Uh, where's the other eight? Tell me that's an E8 and that's an E8. There it is. It's on the other side. Over here. Uh, yeah, but all, overall, I mean, this isn't going to be a long set. I have to just, I have to put a poll out um, if my ten dollar patrons af patrons after this want me to work on a uh, a Lego set that I have. Um, or if they want to see me work on a uh, the Blitz Gundam. I'm excited to work on that Blitz. That Blitz looks cool. Looks very cool. And I am definitely interested in, in working on that. But I also haven't done a Lego set in a while. And then, of course, you know, Pause of the Cause is coming up. I'll talk about ways people can support and refill in the, call, refill in the old backlog will be good. All right, that goes in there, goes in there. It's the wrong piece. All right. That fits in real tight. Feels bad. Yeah. Oh, it feel great. Well, hopefully it's all right. Okay, so it goes in there. Aha. That's why it didn't feel good. The piece was upside down. I was like, this does not feel right. Uh, so that's that's a nice little bit of me uh, going with my instincts there. Uh, so what was happening was I had the piece like this here. Uh, and I'm pushing, I'm trying to push this in because this is going to, you know, lock into something. The waist is going to lock in there. And I'm like, this is not fitting in right. This doesn't feel right. I look again. I have it upside down because I don't realize this is the front of the kit. And then when I put it in there, it works out fine. So a little bit there, trust your instincts. Even if your instincts are like mine, sometimes not good. You can still actually be right because sometimes like you're, you're working on a kit. You never worked on this kit before. You never, you're not super familiar with this franchise, you know, you're like, whatever, uh, it's been a while, all that, like, those things, you, you know, you end up second-guessing yourself, you're like, uh, this doesn't make any sense to me, this kit was released in 2001, and is in full Japanese, oh, there are screws, I don't know what I'm doing, well, you have one, trust your instincts, especially if you know you've had experience building, and two, the thing that I, I, I've definitely said is, the thing that I've, I've used resources as well is, somebody's built this kit already. Now, maybe they did a time lapse and they don't really explain things. Maybe they have very poor audio. Maybe they are uh, not the best talkers in the world and don't know how to, you know, enunciate or have a conversation while they're doing things. Uh, or they're just using lots of jump cuts. But somebody's probably built the kit that you're having issues with and i am a hundred percent always going to advocate for fucking go on youtube see what's up see what what people are saying like you know search for the kit see if there's message boards like i'm not saying go on a reddit or anything but like check the internet to see if people are talking about the same issue that you're running into because chances are someone else is that could be a good uh, that could be a good resource, which I've definitely myself taken advantage of. See, what I'm saying is, I'm glad this is a piece of plastic and not a sticker. Um, I was kind of afraid that the chest was going to be stickers, and I'm glad that it's not, because uh, that way they do a pretty good job, and we'll see this on the shoulders of matching this color. This color feels good, and we'll see how it looks when it's in, you know when stickers on there. But yeah, I, I was definitely a little uh, worried that the that this piece was going to be that these were going to be stickers there instead of plastic. And then A twelve here, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that, you know, people, you know, ask for tips now and again, and I, such an amateur, I would say, I am, uh, I am semi-pro at best when it comes to this stuff, but definitely, if you run into a problem, somebody else ran into it, and maybe figured it out the hard way, or they looked it up, and they're like, here's what I found when I looked this up. Uh, one thing I do enjoy about this kit as a high grade is that this is the rubber. These are our PC components right here. That's it. Our connectors, uh, that's it. That's all we've got. I really like that. Uh, it is nice that they are not relying on them too much uh, as a shortcut, which you find in some kits. Um, I got a 2DS doorstop, and I'm going to put GBA games on it. Mr. Bob, in this house, we love and respect our 2DSs, okay? I have a 2DS. Do you know I never owned a 3DS? I only owned a 2DS. Because I had gotten out of handheld because uh, my job had changed, and I didn't have a commute anymore uh, at the time. And so I was completely and totally out of Pantheld stuff. And then my job changed again. Uh, it is the shape of a doorstop. I disagree. Look, it's got a wedge effect to it, but it's not it's a doorstop. Uh, but yeah, put some GBA games on there. Have fun with it. That's a fun system. The 2DS is a fun system. That 3DS, look, the 3D never really meant anything, and it works out way better as a uh, as just a big thing that can fit in a big pocket or the front pocket of your uh, bag we're gonna do science here um, I really did do enjoy my 2ds I mean I've not played it since Sun moon but uh, it was a good good piece of equipment that still sits in my in my in my desk drawer and someday may reemerge if I ever want to take some Pokemon off of Sun and Moon and do something with them. It, it will make a return. But yes, it's got a good feel. Yeah, I think it's a it's a fun kit. Like I was never interested in the in the the um, uh, uh, the 3D. I did like the foldability of the 3DS. Certainly, don't get me wrong did like the foldability but 2ds was also like yeah i, I like that console quite a bit some good times with that console i want to play game boy games yes but yeah if you want to break out the uh the old gba games you can do good on there although i wonder if i bet elite beat agents plays better on a 3DS than a 2DS because the screen the top screen um, uh, size differential I bet it doesn't play as well I bet that yeah I bet that suffers but I think most games would be fun alright we're putting we're already putting a backpack on our kit look at this the Maganac already has a backpack backpack on a Maganac oh yeah give a dog a bone or, as I was supposed to be saying, Maganac. Alright, we got a sticker coming up. Stickers coming up! Gotta get ready. Uh, Alright, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna um, build the head, and then we will take our pause for the cause, and I'll talk about ways that you can support the stream and all that fun stuff. Um, boop. This piece does not want to come out that easy. It's good, but yeah. All right, there. A twenty-two and a twenty-three. Just build our head. Yeah, just uh, not too many pieces to this kit, but whatever. We'll get it together. Put it all together. 
make it happen. Uh, DS games on 2DS can be hard, uh, but there is a key combo to match resolution. Ooh, Mr. Bob, I did not know that. Well, there you go. See, I'm learning something. Okay. Well, that's good. Good to know. Okay. Put this, that, head. We are going to put the face on first, and then we are going to apply our sticker. And our sticker is sticker one, which is this one. Then I'm going to look at the box. Let's see how it looks. Yeah. This is a, uh, a sticker to indicate a moving eye, kind of, you know, tracked eye sticker. Which we're going to try not to fuck up. Definitely going to need new tweezers in the future. Definitely. All right, so once again. I'm going to use the reference photo. So it goes like that. Hmm. Okay. So we've got um we've got a small spot that juts out here that this goes on. Sorry, you're seeing my messed up finger. It's fine. The fingernail is just messed up. The finger itself is totally okay. All right. Sticker in place. One sticker done. Uh, like I said, we're going to finish up the head, and then I will do the old pause for the cause. Talk about ways you can support the stream. Spooky. It's not spooky at all. I am often saying that. And do not mean it. All right. Okay. One. 17 All right Yep and All right, head is done. Finish the head. We can put that on our base. It's got some movement to it, but obviously, the thing, one of the things about this kit is it's got no neck. It's really got no neck, so we don't have to work too hard to apply this to it. Yeah, it's just really cramped head in there. Okay, hi everybody. We're gonna take a moment. Uh, to talk about ways you can support the channel if that's uh, something you'd like to do and then we will talk about anime and we will uh, continue to work on the back and act and talk about other stuff that's coming up and people are excited about uh, first and foremost if you're currently a subscriber to the channel thank you so much for doing that it really does mean the world to me uh, you can uh, throw the bear cave or the lego or the scythe emote in the chat let the people know uh, that is your reward uh, tier 5 is the lego and, and bear cave tier 10 or uh, tier 2, which is uh, $10, or Tier 3, uh, you can use the Death Sight um, emote, uh, which is really nice, and appreciate people to do that. Uh, bits and Coins, always appreciated as well. Um, you know, the leaderboard is up for a few more days, so about a week left. If you want to get your name on that leaderboard, you can do that. Um, always appreciate that. Just makes the payouts at the middle of the month a little sweeter. Um, I... Uh, um, oh, if you used your Twitch coin, you got to manually renew. Check that. 
see if it's time for you to renew your Twitch coin uh, here. Always appreciate that. Folks that subscribe, they use real cash money. Folks that use their Amazon Prime, they link to their Twitch Prime and use that. That's great. Uh, if you ever renew, make sure you hit that notification so that we all know and can say thank you on stream because it means a lot to me as well. Um, uh, folks that are watching here on YouTube, uh, you can get on the action as well. Uh, not only do I have a Twitch account, but I also have a Patreon because it's 2019, y'all. I have a Patreon. I mean, I've had it for a while, but I have a Patreon. Um, there's different tiers, different rewards. Hey, folks that get, are given $5 a month and $10 a month are going to get this video tonight. Everyone else, tomorrow. That's a little thing I can do. Uh, I can't do much, but I can do that. I have an Amazon wish list. Uh, I just put the end on the Amazon wish list, uh, as mentioned, um, by Ultron. Uh, so that's now on the wish list. Uh, but I'm going to push that further down the list because the top stuff in my wish list is always, now, this is new, fairly inexpensive. Um, anything you buy on this wish list, because uh, it's Amazon... Uh, get sent to me. You don't have to worry about knowing my address. I don't have to worry about putting my address out there. It just gets sent. I have a few items on the top of the list that are great um, because I, uh, I don't have a lot of stuff left in my um, to build list. I've got a couple small Lego sets, one kind of large Lego set, not too large, kind of large, and one master grade left to build. So if you want to see something built on the stream and have it jump the queue, that would be great. Um, some of them are small little kits and very inexpensive. Some of them are more expensive. Uh, the Haro Plot, uh, the Haro from the Gun to Build Divers, which is not really from Build Divers. I just put it in there. That's $20. Um, that looks real fun. And that's like a real weird ball inside of a mech thing. I wouldn't mind building that. But yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff up in there. Um, if you're interested. Uh, I'll put the link in the chat. It's also in the show description on the YouTube stream. Uh, that's my Amazon wish list. Now, folks have been saying, Pat, it sucks that the only way to support you is through Amazon, be it through Twitch or uh, through uh, Amazon wish list, which is still the best way to support the stream. Um, well, I have an alternative. It's convoluted comparatively. It's not as easy as going to my Amazon wish list, clicking a thing, putting in your credit card information, sending me that thing. This is a little more complicated, but I have an alternative now. I added this. This is new. It's an alternative. Uh, you can go to usagundamstore.com. Uh, the link is in there, slash collection, slash gift cards. You could buy a gift card. It'll be sent to you in an email, and you get a code. You could then uh, whisper me here on Twitch. Send me a DM, because my DMs are open. Uh, guess my email address. It's not hard to guess. It's not hard to guess. Uh, and send me the code. My, you know, uh, and then I can um, add that gift card to my account on uh, U.S. Gundam Store. And then when I have enough money to buy a kit, buy a kit from them. Is that easier than Amazon? No. It's not at all. It's not easier. I wish it was. It's not easier. Um, so I apologize, uh, that I don't have a better method than, than Amazon, but, uh, yeah, no other store has a public wish list where you can send stuff that works easy for what we do here. I also have a coffee and, uh, I do want to say, uh, as we get back into building in a moment after a few more plugs, anything that I get through coffee, through Patreon, through Twitch, YouTube revenue, which eventually someday I'll get more of that all gets goes into buying kits and equipment the you know i'm not going to buy action figures on usa gundam i'm going to buy model kits and then i'm going to build those model kits so that's a thing uh i have a discord i try to check it every day sometimes i don't but people post stuff they're working on if you want to see what other people in the community are building jump in on that discord uh it's chill it's comparatively very chill uh and then um here is the background of characters that I did this week. Background of characters is an improvised character show that I do where I grab an image and just kind of improvise and see what's going on. Uh, this week is my first sequel. In the show description of that is a link to the previous one because uh, I've never, never done a follow-up, but I really enjoyed the character of uh, Doug, the mayor of cool California. 
I just had so much fun with them, uh, the previous one that I was like, I, I want to do this one too. And then today I shot next Wednesdays, which is an image that I've been sitting on for a while and really wanted to find the right voice for. So I'm excited about that. This next one's going to be good. Uh, and then lastly, I am not streaming this Saturday. I normally stream Saturday evenings. I will not this week. My next stream will be this Sunday because this Saturday I am at the Game Developers of Color Conference. And it's going to be good. Expo, not conference. The Game Developers of Color Expo, I should say. That's a cool thing. Uh, I'm volunteering there. And I'm going to see some friends. And it's going to be cool. All right. That's it. I'm going to drink some water. Here is your excuse. Slash. Orders. Slash. Uh, plea. Get some water. You deserve it. Oh, that was one of those. Oh, no. I actually need a lot more water than I thought I did. Because I just drank a whole lot of water. Oh, no. <laughs> I was in need of water. Um, all right. So we finished our head, finished our chest. Now we've got to build, uh, we got to put stickers on a thing. Does it have us just build the whole right arm and then the whole left arm? Is that, is that what we're doing here? No, we're going to build this twice. All right, we're building it the shoulders at the same time. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we're going to build the shoulders, and then we're going to add, we're going to pop our shoulder pieces out. Then we're going to add some stickers to it. Uh, so we'll do that right now. Uh, and I can start talking about anime. Oh, boy. Thursday is a big day for anime because a lot of stuff comes out that I want to talk about, so we can talk about a lot of things. First and foremost, Black Clover. So, it was it was interesting to watch um, Crunchyroll social media be like, manga fans, don't spoil what's about to happen in this episode. Manga fans, don't tell anyone. And I was like, no. No, characters die. If you're telling me that the idea of a minor at best character dying is going to really destroy the like I was like no no this is not a character's death that people are going to be like oh no what does this mean for everything that's happening here in the Clover Kingdom it's like now nah, we're good we're all right uh they really built it up like it was I mean it's a shocking thing but it's not like going to change the whole landscape uh, the as revealed in a previous episode idea that some of the villains of the show have been laying dormant uh their souls are laying dormant in people we know that's a big reveal that's a way bigger reveal to me than oh this character died also hey 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 everybody um, a character who has total command of time? His magical ability is the command of time. I feel like he's probably not actually dead. Weird guess on my part. That maybe the guy that has total and complete command of time and can borrow time from other people might be okay. Whatever. Uh, that's Black Clover. The fight scenes were really fucking good. They're spending some goddamn money. We're definitely going to get a filler arc that's going to be real low quality and people are going to be real shitty about it. It's going to be a real goofy couple episodes in between arcs. People are going to get real mad about that. But whatever. Uh, are You Lost? I tweeted about Are You Lost a little bit. Um, are You Lost is 12 minutes. I basically said... Um, what if laid back camp was half the length and real horny? That's Are You Lost? Are You Lost is so fucking horny. Uh, there's like, it's, look, one, one, to be very clear, folks watching the stream on uh, live, folks watching it later on YouTube, 
folks who were sent a link to this for some reason. I am not against horny at all. Sexual content, consensual, clearly and obviously. Adult content, anime that has dumb boner jokes. Yeah, I'm okay with all of that. I'm not opposed to that. What I am opposed to is generally when it's like gratuitous and nonsense. I'm sorry, the bear cave moment there, just for the fuck of it. Uh, generally, I'm opposed to to it being like complete and total nonsense. Like, there's some panty shots in this episode. They don't need to be there. They don't at all. There is a point where one of the characters uh, expresses her need for meat, uh, animal meat to eat, because they are trapped on a deserted island I think her a actions in that point are totally justifiable and totally fine and I got no problem with that uh, it is just that like there there is a lingering camera vibe to a lot of the show that I am not super fond of I think it's funny uh, I think there is a real like lack of slice of life anime out there this season. I think this season is is really um, stifled because of that. And I uh, I am happy to see uh, more of that, and uh, I, I'm pleased to see more of that. But in general, um, there there's like a an uneasiness with Are You Lost that I have. Where I think some of the jokes are like, I don't know about that one. But I'm still watching it because I think generally the premise is interesting and we'll see. Um, speaking of interesting premises and we'll see, Isekai Cheat Magician. All right, they're doing quests now. We're developing some story. Uh, isekai Cheat Magician in some ways is the very typical Isekai. I mean, it's in its goddamn name. It is... You know, hey, there's an overpowered dude. He doesn't quite understand his abilities. Hey, there is his childhood friend. Um, they're, they're finally getting some adventuring in. They're now in a party. There's some big bad that's going to happen. Uh, I like the instincts of the main character because he shook hands with a dude and was like, something's up with this dude. Uh, which is very clear. And even though they seem to be pretty overpowered, they're still like figuring things out. And I like that. Um, it's very by the book. It's very by the numbers. But it's not gross in any way. And uh, I'm very happy about that. Uh, it's weird because it's like, it's like I said it's very by the numbers it's but it is slow comparatively like the other isekai that that I can talk about tonight is Demon Lord Retry and Demon Lord Retry which is on Hulu I should say uh not Crunchyroll everything else I've talked about is on Crunchyroll Demon Lord Retry like has been moving at a pretty good pace we've got two party members uh we discovered a thing so last episode uh we found out that he can, because the main character is from a, is is inhabiting a video game character that he created in another video game that was not that was a sci-fi game it was a GTA Online style, but it was sci-fi influenced. Um, so he is playing like a different game than, uh, than the fantasy world he's in. But everything else is pretty similar. So we found out that he's able to play a minor character but he doesn't have full total control over the minor character like a, an alt character we also find out in this episode which I think is fascinating and in, in very actually genuinely genuinely interesting is a thing that you can do is uh, he summoned a NPC that he created and of course in the video game that he used to play she was just an NPC now she's like a person with a personality and of course her personality is creepy and weird she's a doctor but kind of a mad scientist type and also 
I will say it for to clarity. She has a thing for young gentlemen, uh, which I don't expect them to deal with in the show. But he does. She does to the point where Aku, who is the young girl that is hanging out with them, uh, the doctor asks if she would be interested in dressing like a boy. And then that gets like, okay, settle down. So there's a lot. There's there's look. There's a lot to unpack with this show. I don't think I can re recommend uh, Demon Lord Retry. There's some interesting stuff to it. Like I said, the idea that he's he's inhabiting a character he created for a video game, but it's from a different genre than what he's in now. That's interesting. That takes the Overlord idea farther, and I and I like that. Um, I'm into that. But then what I'm not into is. I I have to figure this out, and I want to try to find if I can talk to people that that are more understanding of this topic, because I feel a bit outside my depth talking about this particular topic. But so there are two minor characters. We see them for a little bit. They may join the party eventually. We I don't know. One is a swordsmith. She's not dressed wearing much, even though she's the warrior. She doesn't isn't wearing much. Whatever, kind of Conan inspired gear. Sure, fine. Her traveling partner is a wizard who presents as a young lady, but makes it clear that she is male. Everyone knows she's male. She is not pretending to be female. Uh, but there are certain, certainly jokes around the idea of her being a gay person dressing as a woman not necessarily living as a woman she's not trans which would be which would be one thing and obviously acceptable and fine and cool and in and, and for an anime fairly progressive you don't get them too often uh characters that are trans that are openly trans and not the butt of a joke uh but this seems to be playing for laughs this is like the thing that sucks is, and I don't know if this was the English translation or whatever, but uh, some of the um, break cards, like the commercial break cards, are uh, um, come back and, and have information on their classes and, and identifications. And hers is girly boy, is her gender. And that seems fucked up. And like I said, I don't know yet. My inclination is that this minor character is not cool and is a bummer. And that, like... Because she meets the main character and her response is that they need to go to the capital. And it's like, yeah, we need reinforcements. And she's like, yeah, I need to get cleaned up so I look nice. And it's like, okay. If this character who presents as a woman and dresses like a woman but considers themselves to be male is gay or, or bisexual or, or interested in the main character I obviously obviously I don't have a problem with that but I'm not sure that the show doesn't have a problem with that or doesn't find it hilarious and I that's like I already was like mm, Demon Lord Retry I don't fucking know about you and this is even more reason for me to be like, I don't know about you. This doesn't seem good at all. Um, as a bummer. Because of the four Isekai shows that I'm watching. Two of them. I definitely couldn't recommend to people. Demon Lord Retry, I definitely wouldn't recommend. Right now. Because I just too many questions. And seems like it might just end up being bad. And then um, the other show that I don't... Oh, uh, Do You Love Your Mom or Her Whatever, multi blah, blah, Because that one just feels weird and uncomfortable. Uh, but um, 
Then the last one I'll talk about is, if it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat a demon lord. Which, like I said, not a lot of slice of life here. There's some action in the show, but it feels more slice of life. Uh, not a lot to say about this episode. Uh, her going to school was interesting. Her dealing with other kids is interesting. More people finding out that she is a devil, which is what they... I don't know if this is a translation or if that's what the, sh the world calls uh, demons, but she is known as a devil, and that seems that seems kind of mean. I don't know. Maybe it's fine. Maybe I'm putting my own earthly spin on it, and I need to fucking be cool. But it does seem weird that that class that the that race is called devils. Um, and then we also find out that Latina, who is like exceptional, knows magic, is really smart and really nice and sweet and can, you know, use healing magic and all that. Can't sing for shit. And I think that's a really funny choice. I think it's a very funny choice to be like, oh, this character who's like pretty great and also adorable and you want to love and protect her and yada, yada, yada. Oh, girl cannot fucking sing. And I think that's very cute. Um... So, as I said, I'm not streaming on Saturday, but I will be streaming again on Sunday. So, on Sunday, I'll talk about the other anime that, that you know, I've been watching. Um, and I'm going to try to watch Given. Uh, I've been told that I will really like Given. That apparently it's, like, pretty methodical, but the music, I mean, it's about a band, like, a forming. The music is pretty good, and that, like... It feel like apparently the relationship stuff that's getting formed in it feels natural and good and not bad and shitty and gross, which is awesome. Because the last very male focused gay anime that like made waves that was like was like Banana Fish and there's some fucking troubling shit with that one. So the idea of like yeah cool gay drama that's also about music all right a non-textual one or an actual real one that sounds pretty good i could be up for that we'll see um and then i don't have netflix right now because i go i i go in bits and spurts with netflix but uh, i hear that glass blowing uh show is is fun because they unironically say glory hole a lot. Because it's an industry term. And that... Uh, that the people who do it have no concept that people who... Like, they're so obsessed with glass blowing that they have no way to process uh, any other... Inf like, you, like, I sometimes am with comedy. Where I'm like, oh shit. I'm talking to real people. I'm not talking to people obsessed with comedy right now. Or obsessed with improv comedy specifically. Shit, shit, shit. Uh, you don't understand. Oh, okay. I gotta speak like a person right now. I gotta stop talking chop. And I feel like that, apparently, that glass-blowing reality show is all that. Um, I say that having not actually watched it. Which brings me to this point. Hey, folks, what are you watching? What, what do you got going on? You watching some anime? Uh... You're watching some uh, TV stuff. You're watching some stuff on YouTube, on Netflix. Uh, let me know. Uh, there's a new Gundam coming out. Uh, Forge and Fire on Hulu. I have seen Forge and Fire, Lashbrook. Yes, I have seen that. Uh, there's a new Gundam. It's an SD Gundam show that sounds like it's like a post-apocalypse and there's like a virus I kind of sounds like The Walking Dead, but Chibi Gundam said, I'm going to watch it, but I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know about that show. Um, but if you're interested in glass blowing, says Lashbrook, check out Forged in Fire. Yes, I have seen Forged in Fire. I am aware of that show. I like the people. Uh, but yeah, I am going to check out that anime, the new... New Gundam anime. <laughs> Why the fuck not? I feel like it's 
part of my brad. Hey, hey. Yawning, as I said. Apologies for the yawning. Alright, that's it for the arm there. We finished one arm, so we can just put a shoulder on. This locks in place really nice. There's a little clip there. Let's see. That locks in place real nice. Really like that. Okay. Alright, let's get another arm done. Uh, these stickers went on pretty well. Um, and then we'll, once I get the other arm, we can compare and contrast the uh, stickers to the plastic color-wise. But let's get this other arm built, and then we can talk about that. But yeah, let me know, folks. Uh, Y'all are pretty quiet tonight, which, as always, I understand. Sometimes folks are, are watching while they do other things. Sometimes they are uh, uh, they are not near a keyboard, or they just don't have anything to say. I get that. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me know what you're watching. I'm watching lots of anime right now. And very little else. Um. I mean. I will talk about this. A kind of new internet obsession of mine is. So. I started watching van life videos in January when I got laid off. Not to not that I was going to get a van and I was going to go give van life a try, but the idea of like getting away from things and you know, that kind of a deal kind of appealed to me. You know, tiny home stuff, I've always watched tiny home videos, but eventually you watch a lot of that content and then YouTube doesn't know what else to tell you because you've watched all of that content. Uh and it runs out of things to recommend for you. And they're like, well, if you like this, you should check this out. And you're like, I already watched that. Tell me something I don't know. And they're like, uh, well, if you like this, you should check this out. I'm like, oh, no, I don't actually like that because I don't like this. I don't like this truck video done by this firefighter who lives in his truck when he's not living at the house. No, I don't need to, I don't need this dude. This dude seems like he sucks. I don't watch these videos. And like, okay, well, how about this? And you're like, all right, great. So eventually, YouTube was just like, I don't know. There's this thing called narrow boats. You want to check those out? And I was like, okay. Turns out, I did want to check that out because I do want to watch a bunch of videos about people that. Here's the thing I didn't know existed, and now I do. And I don't want to do it, but I'm happy to learn more about it. Particularly, there are other places in, in the world where this happens, but let's be particular about the ones of people that make videos. In England, there is a whole way of life of people who live on these things called narrow boats. And they ride up and down the canals of England. Uh, I don't know the exact... Like... You should look them up, Washbrook. Because they are like... It's interesting. Like, you can live in it. But, like, imagine... You're going through a canal... And there's one on one side and one on the other. So they're pretty narrow. I don't know the dimensions of them. They're like long, narrow boats... They're houseboats, but they're they're mobile houseboats, and it's weird. And there's a lovely British gentleman uh, that makes videos, and he seems fine. He was a journalist who retired. There's uh, a couple that makes videos. Uh, they're uh, they're uh, they both work in London and only travel on the weekends. And then they're moored. And there's a whole ecosystem. And there are volunteers that help with the canals. And I've learned a lot about dry docks and, and docking. And I've definitely learned more about canal life than I thought I ever would ever know. And it's interesting. And I wouldn't want to do it. But I'm definitely, like, interested in learning more about it. I don't know. Uh, there was there was a lot to unpack about 
about this kind of lifestyle that I was okay oh, okay and you know he's got his uh, everyone uses like LG like they all got like the you know the data networks and antennas to pick up signals and the, you know, it's a long, narrow boat, so most boats have a couple, uh, you know, solar panels on the roof. Camp Camper trailers, but with water. Yeah, dude wants his rug. Also, hi, dude wants his rug. Yeah. Uh, less than seven feet wide as Wikipedia. Apparently, they've been a thing since the 1800s. Yes, because a lot of the, the, the canals, like, look, in the history of the United States, people have been like living on the water as well i mean they're house boats but also like shack boats shanty boats like that's a whole element uh in america but yeah apparently in 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 england it's like a whole thing and a whole culture uh and there are conventions and you know industries and people have opinions on stuff and you know a lot of of course there's youtubers that do it and like i said that's how i'm finding out about it and it's one of those things where I'm like, this is fascinating. I don't want to do this. I don't think I could sleep. I, I slept on boats before. I did not enjoy it. But like also, the whole time, like the tiny house stuff is always kind of interesting. When you pull apart, like, look, obviously I'm an environmentalist, okay? I am, uh, but... I am always more interested in, I'm less interested in the hippy dippy uh, folks uh, on the tiny house movement and those videos and more interested in people who are just like, everything's fucking expensive. So I convinced these people to let me build a shack in the back of their house and I pull electricity and then I do their gardens and that's how I afford to live and I'm always just like yeah I get that it's like I sold all my shit and got this tiny place I'm like fuck yeah that sounds great now the thing about narrow boats is that like there's mooring there's places you can go and oh, I got a buzz there there's places you can go and dock there's whole communities around it there's of course marinas and stuff like that there's a whole industry revolving around it. There's way stations and petrol stations and and repair places for the blacking of the of the boats. Uh, the underneath the blo- uh, basically like treating the metal because it's oxidizing with the water and all that. All of that. There's an industry involved in it. But at the end of the day, it's not as weird as like I pulled into this residential neighborhood and I'm sleeping in the back of this. Uh, camper van and I hope nobody notices because that's the, always the part of the of that the van life that I'm like I don't like that part of van life the whole being in a van and just hoping things work out like I heard this Walmart parking lot's cool I drive this gym I have a gym membership so I can go poop somewhere like I didn't like any of that I'm not saying that I'm going to move to England and get a boat. But I am saying that, like, it seems pretty cool. England is probably also not the best place to do it. Because, like, the countryside is really nice. But, like, a lot of people were just like, yeah, I got the solar panels. And, you know, they're only good five months a year. And I'm like, that's not good. It's like, oh, you got to hope for some sun. Uh... But yeah, I don't know. It's interesting stuff to have on while I'm doing other things, really. That's really what I'm... I'm most interested in. Alright, so... Alright, so we can build these legs two at a time. So we're going to build our legs here two at a time. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed cool. That's my YouTube obsession right now is canal boats and narrow boats and live in that life. Uh, and the difference between like, oh, well, we use a cold heater. Oh, well, we use uh, a cassette toilet. 
Uh, oh, well, we use a compost toilet. Oh, you gotta do this. I don't like the difference. So, like, that's the shit that I'm real. I'm always the most into, honestly, is when you get past the, like, this is how people live into, well, these are people who have, like, fucking strong-ass opinions on their weird shit. I'm always interested in that. Like, yeah, people were just like, oh, well, we don't do solar at all. Or, well, we're an electric boat. Uh, so we can only go on these canals because they're up, they're optimized for, for that lifestyle. But honestly, it's the only way to go. Anytime you hear it's the only way to do something, I'm like, hell yeah. Y'all are conditioned and excited about your weird thing. Uh, kind of like the glass blowing. I'm just like, oh, it's interesting. I'm never, I'm never gonna. That's something I'm gonna do. As long as you don't have to listen to sail the canals from Mario Party. No, I think, uh, Solf, I think you're okay there. Uh, I think you're all right on that. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it seemed kind of cool. Uh, solo, doing it solo, although does present the problem because, uh, so I've always known how canals work, but uh, canals, like, there are a lot of interconnecting locks, but basically it's just like, you got to go in, open the thing, get your boat in, close the thing behind you, raise the level of the water so that you go up to the other thing so that the door in front of you can open so you can go out. Uh, and then you have to do that by yourself. You got to keep getting in and out of your boat and it can be a nightmare. And there, of course, there are people that will help. And sometimes you might be able to pair up with someone uh, and, you know, you're kind of going in and out together like that seemed interesting and then like I don't know there's sometimes people have dogs on their boats and that's always fucking cool as shit or cats on their boat that's fun too I don't know there, there's some stuff about it that like I like learning things I like learning weird shit and learning about like lifestyles of people and all that Uh, but it's, it's certainly, it's one of those things where like, sometimes you watch those shows and you're like, well, once I figure it out, figure my shit out, I'm doing that. And this is the case. I'm like, nope. Uh, tiny house is something I could definitely do. Cause I have lived in very tiny rooms in very tiny rooms in very tiny apartments. I have lived in very small spaces and made it work. My current lifestyle would make it f kind of difficult to do that in that I need the space for this table. But you may remember that I built on a, before I got this table, I built on a much smaller space and made it work. I could make it work in a tiny home. I could build a tiny home around the idea of live streaming. <laughs> just seems weird. I could do tiny space. Uh, I've been very happy to have a large bedroom Uh is my main living space but that is a luxury that I did not have uh, for much of my uh, time as an adult so I could definitely get back into that element of it so tiny home stuff no problem uh, could definitely do that van life stuff like uh, it's the it's the pulling into a neighborhood it's the like camouflaging your stuff like I don't I don't like that. I don't like that part of it. The whole mobile home thing. I'm not really into that part. All right. Okay. So we're just building our legs here. These are pretty simple, straightforward legs. You can see the the pieces that we're going to be connecting to right here. Uh we got a swinging connecting piece there that's going to connect to our feet. This kit is just coming together like I have had no issues. Uh, this is just a pretty straightforward kit. Oh, I will take a look at that. I said I was going to look at the that once I put the top together. And then 
got distracted by other things. So let me connect these pieces here and then we'll uh, talk about this. So the thing I wanted to point out uh, is if we're looking at this, and I'll, I'll, I won't zoom in, but I'll raise it up to the camera. The difference between the stickers and the plastic. We'll look at that in a second. Let me just connect these parts here. So, just got to connect this. This goes to this. Oops, no, it doesn't go like that. Hmm. Ah, I had one of these pieces upside down. That'll do it. That'll definitely do it. Okay, so let's let's compare and contrast this. Let's look at this here. Let's uh, judge this compare. So you can see here, this is plastic. This is a, a piece of plastic right here. This is sticker. It's pretty great. Uh, I This is definitely shinier than this. It's definitely duller as a sticker. Uh, obviously, it's a 2019 sticker, so it's still fairly new. But I would say uh, it's not going to look great in this camera. So maybe this camera here. It's pretty, pretty good. Like, I do think that that looks comparable. Uh, my sticker work also is not too bad. But yeah. I would say overall that's pretty good. Um, speaking pretty good, Smack Neck's pretty good. I would say overall, we're in a, on Sunday, which will be the next build stream. We will um, connect up. I'll kind of connect these parts here, but connect things together. Gotta yeah, add in our. Can do this now. Finish up our legs, build the waist, put the weapons together. Nice and easy. Got to build our feet and our ankles and our waist, which will be, yeah. And then, And then what else we got left? Oh, then we have uh, assembly and weapons. A couple stickers to put on. The axe to put together. Yeah. Shield. We'll definitely finish this up on Sunday. I'm not. I'm not expecting it to go uh, to be done there. And then probably on Sunday start our next thing, which I will put a poll up for uh, my ten dollar patrons tomorrow. To be able to vote on what I build next. It'll literally be the Blitz Gundam from Gundam Seed. Great stealth Gundam. Uh, or a um, a Batman Lego set that it features a Batwoman. I'm very excited about that. Also, I don't think I've ever done any DC uh, model kit or Lego sets before. So, that's new. Um, but that's coming up. Uh, as I said, next stream is on Sunday. Not Saturday night. I'm doing Sunday because Saturday is the Game Developers of Color Expo and I'm working it. And there's an after party and I don't want to race home and be late because the trains can be very bad. Uh, and so I'm going to, but since I'm not working on Sunday, I'm going to stream Sunday night. And that's going to do it for this stream. Uh, thank you all for hanging out. Remember to uh, subscribe. If you like it, tell a friend. If you want to see more, uh, of, of these streams uh, it is very helpful to spread the word and tell people that you like what you're seeing and they should check it out uh, you know we always get a bump post packs but I would love to see a pre packs bump that would be nice so if that's something you're interested in doing like tell somebody you know retweet a tweet of mine when I say when my stream is uh, I don't know you don't have to do anything you also can just watch but I'm going to throw the bear cave mode in there. If you're a subscriber, you can throw the mode back at me uh, as I say thank you. Uh, but thank you very much for hanging out. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday. I'm going to upload this video. i got to take some photos of these kits. And I'll see you next time on the next Build With Bear workshop 
Bye-bye.